thank you for joining us for Reactivated, the 15 minute webisode where we dig into the depths of the archives. With tradition, we start with the usual bot bit. That's right. On screen, you can see probably best to describe this robot as very comedic sort of robot. Answers will be revealed a bit later on. We now go on to our fantasy fights. That's right. Selecting from random three robots competing from the first series right way through to series 10. So it's a big range of competitors as ever. We'll be drawing from the limited edition pencil case. Just to confirm, all the robots are here. There's quite a lot. I mean, there are hundreds of robots in this pencil case. We'll be drawing three. Our first one is completely random. I'm not looking. Vader from series six. Okay, good machine. Very good. A good vertical flywheel. Tornado from series six. <laughs> Two series six robots. Okay. They didn't actually fight each other in Series 6, so this is a good lineup. And finally, <laughs> I mean, out of all the robots, Storm 2 from the seventh series. Well, I mean, <laughs> pretty evenly matched competition. Interesting, of course, Storm 2 and Tornado have fought each other in the wars. Vader, of course, has the vertical disc, but no Shremex. So who would win, Vader, Tornado, or Storm 2? all the robots. Okay, let us know what you think in the comments and I'll give you my feedback a bit later on. We are going to rewind now. Now, <laughs> not just a rewind, it's about as far back as you can remember as we reflect on a particular robot who basically was the first thing we ever saw in Robot Wars. We're rewinding back to Roadblock. It's 1998. It's the first heat of the first series and the first robot to come out of the depths of the smoke. History was made. That's right. And the design of the road ahead closed signs, the graphics, uh, were actually meant to come off, but they didn't have enough time to. But it looked good on camera, which is why they kept the design. So there we go, a little bit of a fact there. It completed the gauntlet, got through pretty pretty comfortably. Then in the second round it was against Shunt in the sumo. No real match for Shunt because it did actually complete and throw Shunt off. Quite a lot of robots did manage to attempt this in the early days. It then progressed to the arena stages and its first fight was against Nemesis and then Killatron. I mean at the time Killatron, Nemesis and Roblox all in the same heat was pretty interesting to say the least because if you notice in this, the first series I think the first heat contained probably the most famous robots that were to come throughout the whole series. We then had to wait six weeks for the grand final show of the first series of course Roblox featured and it really because the six heat winners all competing in the arena in the final fight First sign of the Annihilator, an early sort of incarnation of the Annihilator setup. But Roblox triumphed as it faced off against five others, as it destroyed the competition and made history by becoming the first robot to lift the trophy. It was a wedge. I mean, what more can you say about Roblox? It then did return though for series two, and it was actually a completely new body shape. They had actually reconstructed the robot, even though it, it does look the same. But Series 2, again, their running streak continued. And for me, their next trial run in the semi-finals was probably my favourite performance, mainly because it featured a certain house robot drive into the pit. In fact, it's probably the only time Matilda did actually drive into the pit. If I'm wrong, leave a comment in the comments section. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Did she drive into the pit? after that encounter. Roblox did enough though and progressed to the uh, arena stages where they destroyed King Buxton, they soared into a tyre and uh, that led them through some other grand final. And then of course the clash of the titans. Cassius by this point had made a name of itself in the second wars. Sadly Roblox's run ended against Cassius in the arena. And they did manage to beat Killatron, a bit of a grudge match from the first series, and came third place. 
So they did have a great run with the Roblox robots. Of course, the team came back with Beast of Bobbin in the Third Wars. Pretty much the same concept, really. Still a wedge, it just looked different. You know, it was a beast, it was black. Circular sword didn't work on the back. Uh, they reached the semis and then the team retired. So what more can you say about Roblox? It was a legend. It was the first robot we ever saw. It was the first champion. And we certainly remember it. We come to a milestone, as, as I just mentioned, briefly mentioned before about Roblox getting through to two consecutive finals in a row. For me, the milestone here comes today for a true warrior and a milestone in Robot Wars, the Robot Wars story, the Robot Wars journey, and that is Chaos 2 retaining the title. Chaos 2's reign lasted for two and a half years between the third and fifth series. Uh, it won 18 fights in a row from its debut in the third series right up to its last win of the fifth series. We're not including extreme within those wins, so the 18 fights that they actually won in a row were the main series fights. Let's try and go through each fight. So from debuting in the third series, their first fight, of course, who could forget? Sonic, then an amazing fight against the Big Cheese, led it through to its first semi-final against Trident, then Maze 2 in the grand final. We've mentioned it before, that epic fight against Firestorm before meeting Hypnodisc in the grand final and winning. It then came back for the fourth series. It flipped into Fatical out of the arena. Medusa 2000, Atomic, all gone in the heat. Chaos 2 was through to another semi-finals where they defeated Steg 2 and then flipped Tornado out of the arena. Another grand final loomed. Very close two fights because, of course, both Stinger and Pussycat were invertibles. And this is the moment. Pussycat against Chaos 2. Really 50-50 for me with that fight. Very pleased to see Chaos 2, though, get the trophy and lift it. And this is where history was made. A milestone in the Robot Wars story was created. It came back for the fifth series, defeated Storm Force, then it went on to destroy Steel Avenger, tossing it once again out of the arena, and then Smidsey before reaching its third consecutive semi-final, where we know it's <laughs> one of the best fights we've ever seen in the wars against Wild Thing, and that was its last official winning fight, because of course in the semi-final round two lost to Bigger Brother. For me, Retaining the crown is a huge achievement. I would say Carbide came extremely close, of course, getting through to three grand finals in a row. Razor, of course, came close, nearly, <laughs> very nearly, hanging on to the title for Series 6. Chaos 2 is the only one who's done it, a milestone achieved, and will never be forgotten. For our merchandise memory this time, as you can see, I'm joined by two guests two rather big guests. These were the remote controlled toys that you could get back at the peak of when the pullback toys, for example, Mr. Psycho here and all the others, were released early 2000, 2001. Killer Lot was released a little bit later. Matilda here was the first, along with Shunt, who is somewhere around. I didn't have time to find him, he is somewhere lurking. Um, but yes, uh, pretty much untouched since we used to play with them. <laughs> to be honest, uh, let's should we give some a go, see if they see if kill lot works. I don't think he's gonna work after 18 years, to be honest, but we'll soon see. I mean the chances of him working really are are quite low. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Well, chances of him working now are pretty, pretty low, to be honest. Zero. Uh, usually, <laughs> usually at this point, uh, <laughs> I'd refilm that. <laughs> uh, but chances are that's probably going to stay in. <laughs> so, Matilda. I'll just keep Matilda on then for now. One of the issues I had with the pullbacks, um, not with the pullbacks. See, now Killlot's put me off. One of the issues I did have with the radio controlled machines is that they work fine. I mean, should we try that again? I don't think Matilda will work. Nope, she doesn't work. Kill a lot work though. 
Like I said, one of the issues I did have was the fact that you played with them after, say, I don't know, a couple of days. You'd bash them in, shunt, put the axe in, you'd use Matilda's tusks, a chainsaw, which actually came with a flywheel. Um, and then, after a couple of days, you'd switch them on and they'd develop a fault. Let me know in the comments if you also experienced this fault, because they just kept on going around in circles and you couldn't stop it. You could kind of manipulate what they were doing with the controls, but they just kept on going around and around and around. So unfortunately, this is probably actually Matilda Mac 6. We bought a hell of a lot, took them back, got a refund and then bought another one. I know they brought out smaller versions, Growler and Tornado, a couple of years later. Uh, so yes, let me know what you think of the radio controlled range and which one was your favourite? Personally, Shunt was my favourite. Uh, so yes, it'd be great to know what you think. We first have one from the website called uh, From the Cable Guy. Uh, your question was, I enjoyed your review on Arenas of Destruction. Have you ever done a series and made robots and is it something you will consider doing at the moment? Now, thanks for your question because I actually did some digging after I'd read this because somewhere I knew that I still had the sheets of when we used to film, um, not film, we used to create tournaments on Arenas of Destruction with robots that we build within the game. And here they are. I don't know if you can see these, but these were very old. You can see um, we used to do groups of five robots in each and we had really good fun. We, we did about oh, a, a good few tournaments with robots, of course, that, uh, that we made in the game. So, answer to your question, if it's something that, I don't know, that you'd like to see on the channel, like a virtual tournament of some sort, let us know what you think. So thank you, Cable Guy, for that question. That's a really interesting question. Now, another question here, World of Woodrow. Hello, World of Woodrow. Thank you once again for commenting and watching. Uh, the question is, have you attended a live event or a programme filming which won and who was your favourite competitor? Okay, well, good question. And I, I know I've been meaning to answer this for quite some time. What I'm wearing was actually from the first live event that we went to at the MEN Arena when um, I think it was was it Razor and Chaos Two that came to Manchester and Craig Charles did the live event and um, oh yeah and then they did one with a with a teddy that was a robot that came in and killed a lot destroyed the teddy so that was my favourite part from there and I'll show you there's the back and we went of course went to the Manchester viewing. We also went to another viewing a bit later on, a couple of years later when they were doing Extreme Series 2, we went to see the European Championships being filmed where we first saw Growler. So thank you World of Woodrow for your comment. Uh, we're also going to be uh, doing another bot build, so let us know which robot you'd like to see from our series being built. Thank you very much uh, for your questions, we've just had time for a uh, bot bit was that comical, hilarious, great team, Millie and Bug. That's right, from Series 4 that one was. Of course, they featured in Series 2 and 3. Just time as well to mention uh, our fantasy fight, who would win Vader, Tornado and Storm 2. Based on the performances we've seen in the actual show, Storm 2 would win. Um, Vader with the disc, not that manoeuvrable, but could have done some damage to certainly Tornado with the, the, the exposed wheels on the side. Of course Storm 2, not a lot that the disc could really catch hold of. So Storm 2 would have done a lot of pushing on both machines, either pushing into the corners, the CPZs, or into a hazard. Storm 2 would have been victorious. So that is my answer. Storm 2 for me. Cease. Oh, well, there is the cease. Um, once again, thank you so much all for watching. And um, <laughs> please comment, please subscribe, share, download. Uh, couldn't make this show without your input. So please do keep feeding in. And we'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching.